Hello everyone. I've made a couple of videos already about this home-brewed uh, laser engraver, but this time I have something much more interesting and extremely useful to give you guys a look at. So my biggest problem with this thing has always been consistency, especially after I upgraded from a half watt to a five and a half watt laser. I've been having a lot of difficulty getting consistent results since every type of wood burns a little bit differently. At first I thought the answer was to dial in the settings on the Inkscape, Inkscape plugin that I've been using to generate the G-code for burning grayscale images, but that just resulted in a lot of wasted time trying to figure things out through trial and error, and I ended up with this massive spreadsheet of settings and wood types, and every time that I converted a file into G-code I'd have to match the settings with the, uh, with the Excel file, and it still never worked quite right main reason for that, turns out, which should have been obvious in the beginning, is that the plugin takes the, um, you know, the color levels and converts it to laser power in a completely linear fashion like this, but the thresholds for where a piece of wood burns lightly and where it burns darkly are much more, much more curvy like this. So, instead of trying to do this through software, it seemed much more obvious to go into this at a hardware level, try to introduce a curve by reading the PWM signal coming in, and translate it. Then I realized that there was an even more elegant solution. These little guys down here at the bottom. So, this is what I came up with. On the left is the breadboard prototype, and on the right is a slightly more permanent version with a hastily thrown together circuit board and a 3D printed enclosure. So, all that's involved is a microcontroller here, which in this case is a TNC 3.1. Probably could have used an Arduino, but wanted to have a faster refresh on the OLED display that's right here. I've got a rotary controller, a rotary encoder to actually control things. It's a photocoupler and a current limiting resistor right here. So the method is pretty straightforward. Um, it reads the incoming PWM signal from the ramps board. That passes through the photocoupler so that I don't fry the 5 volt input on the microcontroller with the 12 volt signal coming out of the ramps board. The timing of the pulses is measured and that determines the intensity of the laser at a given point coming out of the G-code. That value is converted to the appropriate power level based on the tables that I have stored in the microcontroller for the given wood types. And then that's outputted as a TTL signal to uh, burn the shade that's selected. So what makes this even more useful, and I'll show you over here, is that I can program multiple wood types and I can actually switch through them on the fly and I don't have to change any of the settings when I'm generating the G-code. I can just leave the settings in the plugin the way that they are, not even have to think about it, which makes life a whole lot easier. So the wood type and the setting profile is displayed here on screen. We've got half power, raw data, a couple of different wood types set in here, and the graph there at the bottom shows the relative uh, laser strength based on the eight different shades that I'm trying to burn. Just cycle through here. And I can always add more by just measuring things, throwing that data into another row on the table inside the microcontroller, re-uploading it. Good to go. The push button on the rotary encoder toggles this little lock in the corner. Sometimes. When it's red, the laser is engaged, it's reading the PWM signal, outputting the TTL, and that's actually the state that it burns, you can, and you can no longer change the wood profile that's selected. When it's unlocked, the laser is completely disengaged, it's safe, and that allows you to scroll through the various options that are here. And as far as determining settings, uh, this is the method that I've been using. I've got a second build of the software in here that completely bypasses the incoming PWM signal and just outputs whatever power level is on here. So roughly the same setup, 
the rotary encoder scrolls through the power settings from 0 up to 255. You still have a safety lock, safety unlock, which disengages things, and uh, of course the lock prevents you from changing the power setting. So then it's just a matter of scrolling through these numbers here until you find something that gives you a nice gradient, numbers that give you a nice gradient. I write down those numbers, I throw them into the, uh, into the sketch that's loaded onto the microcontroller, label it, and I am good to go. Uh, this one, this is actually Birch. I think I'm still going to have to make one final adjustment in the, uh, in the plug-in that I'm using and slow things down a bit. The, the feed rate that I'm using right now is nice and quick. It works great for softer woods, but I'm going to have to slow it down a little bit to keep everything universal and still be able to burn these harder woods. So, but again, there's a little bit of trial and error involved there, but once you've got the numbers locked in, save them in there, nothing ever changes. It's as simple as scrolling through this little thing right here, whatever you change wood types. So, hope you found this useful. Uh, anybody else who's made a DIY laser engraver or anything similar to this, I'm sure has run into problems much like I did. And this is the best solution that I've been able to find without having to really, really mess around with it at the, uh, the software and G-code generation level of things. So there's interest I can go into greater depth I still kind of want to make a video an overall video on the laser system itself because the thing is a mess and it's full of all sorts of weird custom things but uh, questions and comments I will be happy to answer and if there's enough interest in certain aspects of things that'll uh, determine what kind of videos I make on it in the future so hope you enjoyed hope it was useful good luck in what you're building